I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight about the spirit of Caleb. Hallelujah. And those of you that are in the music ministry, you singers and you minstrels, you need to know that Caleb was of the tribe of Judah. He had that sound in him, amen. He had that anointing on his life, that one that goes first. So many people, they want to be a singer, but do you know that Judah has to go first? That means the battle, amen, you're going to face it first, amen. And whenever God sends you out, he sends you out with that voice that is going to confront the enemy, put fear in him and make him run, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We recognize it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. And Lord, I thank you for those that are listening to the sound of my voice, that that anointing, that same anointing that was upon Caleb will come upon them too. And Father, we thank you that we are in a time of breakthrough. And Lord, we know that you are speeding things up. And we thank you that we are part of the greatest generation the world has seen. And, Lord, we pray your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Go with me to the book of Joshua. I love studying about Joshua and Caleb, don't you? There are certain people, when you read about their lives in the Bible, there are certain people that you would just like to hang out with. I can't think of better people to go to war with than Joshua and Caleb, amen? Oftentimes, I think of Paul. But every time I think of Paul, I think of old Silas. I'm sure Silas wanted to hang out with Paul, don't you think so? He probably talked to his mother and said, Mom, did you hear about the ministry of Paul? I want to go and be a part of his ministry. And his mama probably said, you better watch out. There's a lot of trouble around that man's life. Every city he goes in, it seems like he stirs up devils. Amen. But you know, old Silas went with him anyway. And the Bible said they got arrested. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that was, that was uh, Titus's, Titus's experience with the uh, apostolic anointing. Amen. Got to sit in jail with Paul. Somebody ought to shout amen to that. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're afraid to say amen. You might be thinking you're going to get there too. No, you ain't going to jail. Amen. Joshua chapter 14. Let's look at this in verse number 6. Because what I want to do tonight, we're going to read some scriptures, but then I want to break out some of the things that I believe that was different about Caleb. We need to know that there are people that possess the promise of God but they're not like everybody else. There's something different about them. And so when we read this tonight, what we want to do, we want to see what is it about this man that was different than everybody else. What did he have? What was inside of him that propelled him forward when other people wanted to go back to Egypt? In verse number 6, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kinzonite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my hand heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people built. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thy inheritance, and thy children's forever, because, because thou hast fully Holy, followed the Lord my God. And then he says in verse 10, and oh, I like this verse right here. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Look at somebody and say, God is keeping you alive on purpose. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, 
Even since the Lord spoke this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day 85 years old. Come on, somebody. Now, I know most of you in here, most of you watching, you haven't got to 85 yet. But you know what I like about this man is he did not take his eye off the promise. When God says something to you, he is well able to bring it about. Amen. He says in verse 11, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I can feel something happening already. Hallelujah. Here's a man that was ready for battle. Amen. Both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Are you here tonight? Somebody say, give me my mountain. I like this about Caleb. The Bible says he, hang, he hung out with Joshua. Amen. He said, Joshua, I remember the day when God spoke to you and God spoke to me. We were both in this thing together. You remember it, don't you? When the Spirit of God spoke to us. When Moses came to us and he said, I want you to go spy out the promised land. You know, in this world today, we have promises from God. Last week, I talked to you about Psalms 104 that said, Forget not his benefits. One of his benefits is, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Our God is our protector. He is our provider. He's the one that anoints us to go in and to come out. Amen. And God is still with us tonight. Are you here tonight? Say amen. Caleb said, I remember when God spoke to you and he spoke to me. We were only 40 years old, Gerald. Look what happened. We started getting gray hair. hair. Something began to change. Amen. But when we go back so many years ago, 40 years ago, God spoke and he said, I've got a promise for you. Amen. We know the story. Moses said, select the leaders, 12 leaders of the tribes of Israel, and he sent them in to go spy out the land. They went into the land, and they found out, sure enough, it was a land flowing with milk and honey. I mean, I can get an image in my mind of old Caleb coming back with a good report He's got a bucket of honey in one hand and a bucket of milk in the other hand. And here they are. They're bringing grapes on staves as big as a man's hand. Amen. I mean, I can taste them grapes, right? Mm. Woo. Can you taste them grapes right now? Dipping them in honey. Amen. A bucket of milk with him. Coming back to Moses and saying, oh, surely the land does flow. It is a good land. Amen. See, this is how we need to approach the promises of God. We need to say, yes, our God is a good God. Amen. He is well able. If God said it, he'll bring it about. Amen, somebody. You know, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you even to the end of the age. Look at somebody and tell them, you are not alone. You have a helper. I said you have a helper. You are not in this thing by yourself. God is well able to give you the promises. Amen. He said, I remember I was only 40 years old, and now here I am, 85. And I want my promise. I want my mountain. Moses promised it to me. Do you know what they gave him? They gave him that place, that land where the giants lived. There was something different about Caleb. I want to point out some of the differences to you tonight without giving you a whole lot of scriptures. But one we see here immediately, 
is the Bible said he wholly followed the Lord. Now, we have to think about that a little bit. It seems to me that wholly following the Lord is a little bit different than just giving God a little bit. A full tank of gas is more gas than a quarter tank. That's deep. I ought to just send that up to Apostle David Coker. He can preach that one. Amen. It seems to me a full belly is a lot more than an empty belly. But Caleb fully served God. I know some of you are getting convicted right now. Don't get convicted, amen. Let the Spirit of God talk to you and say, all right, God. But we want to be like Caleb. We want to get our mountain. We want to live a long time, amen. The Bible says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation, amen. But he, fo he wholly followed God. The Bible says that Caleb was a man of war. Write that down. A man of war. Do you know that the, some of the men came back with an evil report? The evil report wasn't that the land was bad. They never said the land was bad. They said, surely the land does flow with milk and honey. But those men were not able to enter in because... They took their eyes off the promise and put their eyes on the giants. The difference between them and Caleb is that Caleb kept his eyes on the promise. All these years he kept it in his heart. Moses gave me that mountain and I want my mountain. I've been waiting all of these years, but I've kept it in my heart this whole time. God spoke to me when I was 40 years old. He told me this and that and the other, and I am not letting go until I get my mountain. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Caleb never let go. The devil will do everything he can to try to discourage you, to get you to quit, to get you to stop to get you to go back to Egypt, to get you to loose yourself from the promises of God and go back into that dry wilderness place. Somebody say, I'm not going to do it. I'm moving forward and I'm not going back. Oh, I wish I'd have been at that meeting. Forty years ago, 40, I was 40. I was 40 when God spoke to you and me at the same time. I wonder what Joshua was thinking. You know, Joshua was younger than Caleb. Caleb is our senior gentleman. He's our statesman. He's the older man. But do you know what Joshua did? The Bible says here that Joshua laid his hands on Caleb and blessed him. Do you remember the time when the Bible says that Moses laid his hands on Joshua and imparted some of that anointing that was on him on Joshua's life? And now we see that Joshua lays his hands on Caleb. Caleb is older. But Caleb needed something Joshua had. And when Joshua heard what was in his heart, the Bible says that he blessed him. Can I just tell you what I think that is? I think that's the Holy Ghost. I think that's the anointing. Are you listening to me? We have to look and see something here. What was it different about this man Caleb? He had an anointing on his life. Are you listening to me? Isaiah 10, 27 talks to us about the anointing. It says the anointing breaks every yoke. The anointing removes every burden. We need the anointing. Those of you that are watching my television, you need the anointing. The anointing is the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Acts 10, 38 says, You all know of Jesus of Nazareth, who God anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Caleb had an anointing upon his life. We need to get into the presence of God. We need that same spirit to come upon us that was on Caleb. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost that keeps you in the race, and it's the Holy Ghost that gives you the power to overcome in this life. Amen. These other people wanted to go back. As soon as they saw that they had to fight, they wanted to go back to Pharaoh. They wanted to return to Egypt. Amen. You know, when you're in the wilderness, that's the place of miracles. That's the place where God performs miracles in your life, and he provides you with manna. He provides you with quail. But there comes a time when the manna stops. Amen. Amen. That's the day you enter the promised land and you possess it. Amen. Amen. So you move from one place to the next by faith in God. As soon as those people saw that there was giants in the land, they changed their mind. They didn't want to serve God anymore. They saw the giants bigger than God. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Well, what does that mean? That means that God is well able to bring you in. I said that means that God is well able to bring you in, to give you what you're believing for. The word says, grow not weary in well-doing, knowing that in due season you will reap if you faint not. Caleb was a man of faith. He believed God. He kept it in his heart all those years. What have you got in your heart from all those years ago? You know, I still have things that I'm waiting for. But I can tell you what, I know they're on the way. And so is your promises, too. Look at somebody and tell them, your promise is on the way. God said it, and he'll bring it about. He is a faithful God. Somebody say, he is a faithful God. Caleb was a man of war. He wasn't afraid of the devil. You know, you can see sometimes when people are afraid of the devil because they say, don't talk about him. Don't talk about the devil. Well, Jesus never taught his disciples or his apostles to ignore the enemy. Jesus went into the wilderness one day, came out of the wilderness with power and went to church. Of all places. When he went to church... There was a demon spoke out of a man and said, leave us alone. Well, Jesus didn't command the porters to drag that man out of the service. He didn't tell Carlos to sing it again. He rebuked that devil, said, shut up and come out. Amen. Jesus never taught us to ignore the giants. I like what David said. Oh, 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 who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would challenge the armies of the living God? All of us have to face a giant. You can't escape it. I said you can't escape it. But do you know that David was anointed as a young man to be king? But he had to wait for the promise to be manifested in his life. But in that time of waiting, guess what God did? God said, I'm going to prepare me a king. And in the midst of this preparation, what happened? He had to fight the lion and the bear. 
Some of you think that that lion was a Goliath. But I'm here to tell you, it could be that that lion was just preparation so you could get to the bear. And that bear was preparation so you could get to Goliath. <laughs> David said, I was watching the sheep and a lion came in and took one of them out of the fold. But here's what he said. And I went out after him. Ooh, I like that anointing, don't you? That's called that pursuing anointing. When you see the devil try to steal the promise of God out of your life, what do you do? The Bible said David went out after him and got that promise back. Amen. <laughs> Caleb was a man of war. Caleb followed the Lord holy. Caleb was blessed or anointed by God. Caleb saw God bigger than the enemy. I'll never forget this one day when the Spirit of God had me going down the Rio Coco River out in the jungles between Nicaragua and Honduras in a boat, stopping along the river at those little village areas or encampments. And this one, we went up there and we ring a bell, and if you ring the bell, you know, the people will come running, they'll come out there, and you have an audience that ain't got nothing to do anyway. Apostle Arturo Sanchez was there. He said, why don't you preach to these people? And I'm looking around. There's no TV cameras anywhere. There's no steeples or stained glass windows, no great crowd, no sound system, no singers. And I asked God, I said, God, what would you like me to say to these people? I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I'm out here in the jungle. And God told me, he said, I want you to tell them how big I am. Tell them I'm the I am that I am. Amen. Tell them I am the God that delivers you. Amen. Caleb did not see the giants bigger than his God. As a matter of fact, when they brought that evil report back, what is it Caleb said? He said, wait a minute. Let us go up at once, for we are well able to overcome them. They are bread for us. That man had a different spirit in him, amen. Something was different about him. You know, when you get around doubt and unbelief, it tries to spread like a flu. Did you know that? And it'll jump from person to person to person. But you know what? When it came over to Caleb, he said, hold it just a minute. Wait a minute. Don't be talking that foolishness around me. God gave me that land. I want that land. God said, I have a land for you. Oh, yeah, it was the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and all the other parasites. But God said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And so when all that doubt and unbelief came around him, he said, wait a minute, I'm not listening to that report. I got a different report. Look at somebody and ask them, whose report will you believe? Somebody say, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. He said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able they are bread for us. I like that part. That sounds southern to me. They are bread for us. It's kind of like we're going to eat their grits. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Caleb was a man of faith. I like hanging around with people that are men of faith. You know, faith is not just words. Faith is found in action. Your actions are signs of your faith. The Bible says that there was two men that had a friend that was sick. They wanted to get that friend into the presence of God. They went to the meeting where Jesus was at and the place was packed. They couldn't get in. People all around the house where he was at. 
People probably looking in the windows and the front door and the back door could not get to Jesus. So these men grabbed their buddy and took him up on the roof and began to take the roof off of that house. I'm telling you what, faith can be seen. I'm telling you that faith has action to it. Amen. And the Bible said they let their friend down into the midst of Jesus. You know, when you get in his presence, something's going to happen. I said when you get in his presence, something's going to happen. And the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. Caleb was a man of faith. He was a man of action. Faith is not sitting around the church singing kumbaya. When you come in church, you come in and you get equipped, amen. But then God speaks to you, he anoints you, then he gives you an assignment and he sends you out. And when he sends you out, he expects you to come back with the spoils. I said he expects you to come back with the spoils. God wants us to invade, to occupy, to influence, and take dominion. Amen. He didn't pray for us to escape out of here. One of the last prayers of Jesus was this. He was in the garden. And he was praying, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of here. But as you have sent me, so send I them. Woo! There's no escape. I said there's no escape. Jesus is not going to rescue us from the Taliban. He has anointed us for this generation. He has anointed us, amen, so that we could possess the land. Caleb had that in his heart. The Bible tells us that Caleb had a different spirit with him. Oh, my. Oh, my. What spirit do you think that was? What spirit do you think that was? I think that was the Holy Ghost with him, amen. Amen. You know, when you got the Holy Ghost with you, honey, let me tell you something. Those giants are grasshoppers. I said those giants are grasshoppers. I said the giants are grasshoppers. You get in the presence of God and you know you got that Holy Ghost anointed on you. All of a sudden, the devil gets smaller and smaller. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would try to stop me from doing what God has called me to do? If God spoke it in my life, I believe it. I receive it. And I'm going to do it. Amen, somebody. You might as well shout yes. My goodness. When Caleb got stuck with the unbelievers, he got stuck with them. You ever got stuck with a bunch of unbelievers? Joshua and Caleb got stuck. For 40 years with a bunch of unbelievers. So you ain't doing that bad. (laughs) So how do you think Caleb handled it? I believe that every day Caleb got up and walked around and listened to all that doubt and unbelief. I believe every time he heard some discouraging words, he looked over to that mountain. I said every time he heard unbelief, he looked over at that mountain. Oh, I can just hear him now. Go ahead and and complain all you want to, but I'm going to get my mountain. God promised it to me, and I'm going to get it. Amen. Come on, tell somebody, I'm about to get my mountain. So every day, here he is getting up, all these people in the wilderness dying off left and right, people with no faith, but yet they were still under the covenant of God. People dying left and right. But you know what happened? Every time that unbelief came near him, he looked at that mountain. 
My God is my healer. Whose report will you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. He shall provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me tonight? You get around people that say, wait a minute now. I know you don't have the education you need to make it. When you hear those words of doubt and unbelief, something ought to have happened. Remember, Caleb had a different spirit. You and I got a different spirit. We got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. What happens when you get in a group of unbelievers and all of a sudden you start doing this? You start singing a song. Amen. Something begins to bubble up inside of you. Ooh-wee. Something starts happening. Amen. See, you and I are not like everybody else. God has called you and separated you for such a time as this. Jesus said you are salt and light in a dark place. Amen. So that means when you walk into the room, the spiritual climate has to change. Amen. David fought the lion and David fought the bear. And every time he fought, he won. I said, every time he fought, he won. And you're going to do the same thing, too. Caleb was of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah always went first. They had a different sound in them. Amen. Do you remember what God told David? He said, when you hear the sound in the mulberry trees, then you know that the enemy is under attack by God. Amen. There is a sound, honey, and it comes up out of your spirit and out of your mouth and into the environment. Caleb wasn't like everybody else. He had another spirit with him. You are not like everybody else. You've got another spirit with you too, amen? Come on, stand up on your feet tonight. And Joshua blessed him. And gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephthah, Hebron for an inheritance. Years ago, I translated the word Hebron to mean the seat of association. In order to get to Hebron, you had to go through the land of giants. In order to get to that place. Caleb had to go into the land of the giants. But do you know what? He didn't care. It didn't matter. One giant or a hundred giants. They are bred for us. God wanted to destroy all those people that had no faith. But then Moses interceded. And and God said, all right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let Joshua go in, and I'm going to let Caleb go in. Because Caleb has another spirit with him, I will bring him in. You're not alone. You don't have to fight the giants by yourself. You are not alone. The battle is the Lord's. Amen. Come on up here, praise team. I feel Holy Ghost anointing here tonight. Look at somebody and tell them, it's going to be all right. You're going to make it. God is on your side. I said, God is on your side. Father, we thank you tonight. For that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to be in this building tonight. I thank you, God, tonight that there are people that have needs. Some people are sick in their body. And, Lord, we proclaim that you are the God that healeth us. Some people, God, need a financial miracle. Lord, we believe that you are our provider. Other people, God, need deliverance from danger. 
And Lord, your word says you are a very present help in time of trouble. Lord, there are other people that are making decisions and they need spiritual understanding and spiritual wisdom. Lord, your word says to lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you will make our path straight. Lord, we believe that the anointing breaks every yoke and every bondage. Removes burdens, God, and oppression. And Father, I thank you tonight that that anointing is in this house to help people to minister to them. If you've got a need tonight, something's happening in your life, and you need that anointing on, you get down to this altar right now. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. There's an anointing here tonight. The Spirit of God is here to help you, to minister to you. Every need, every need, every need. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Come on, just pray with me. Come on, just pray with me, church. Oh, Father, we thank you that when we lay our hands on these people, that anointing will come upon them. They shall receive that which they need tonight. I said they shall receive that which they need tonight. And Lord, we believe we receive in Jesus' name. You are a supernatural miracle working God. Jesus, we know that you do not fear what we fear. And you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, we do bless them right now. Come on, everything's going to be all right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Woo, that's it, honey. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, Holy Ghost. Everything's going to be all right. Yeah, be all right. Be all right. Yeah. I got a feeling. God. Shukara by Yetara Bakuya.